You need to understand this if you want to build muscle. Doing random stuff and expecting max results never worked well for anyone. And when it comes to building muscle, if you want to maximize your progress in the gym, it's extremely important to understand what you're doing, or at the very least, why you're doing it. If you understand that, now you know why your training is working, or if it's not working. In my experience, there are three different mindsets that people have when it comes to training. Number one, you have just train, bro. These are the guys that go to the gym with no plan. They probably train hard, but the fact is, if they're getting results doing this, they're most likely just getting results by accident. Number two are the guys who need to do 52 sets. They need to train with lengthened partials, optimal exercises, and the list goes on. Now, these guys are onto something, but the problem is they're hyper-focused on the minor details. And the internet, unfortunately, will brainwash them into thinking that these details are the key. But the key to actually building muscle is understanding this next simple fact. And if you wanna build muscle, the guy you wanna be is in fact number three, the person who understands general adaption. And if you don't understand that, I'm gonna break it down right now for you in simple terms. And when you understand this, I promise you, you will never be confused about your training again. And if you apply it, you're gonna make the most amount of progress you ever have from training. Building muscle, it works like this. You train, which creates a stimulus for growth. This also causes an inroad into your recovery ability. At this stage, you're actually getting weaker, you're actually getting smaller. In addition, you're getting more fatigued. After a hard chest workout, you can't lift the same weight you did before that workout. Your muscles are fatigued, they may become sore, and after that workout, your body, it's in the alarm stage. This basically means your body recognizes a stress, and its response is to recover from this stress and actually equip you to handle it again. How does this happen? First, your body needs time to adapt. Time is key here. With this, proper nutrition is also essential. But first, give it time, and your body will first return back to baseline. Now, depending how hard you train, what exercises you perform, how many sets you do, and your individual recovery ability, as well as your training experience, this initial baseline back to recovery period could take roughly one to three days. Again, this is for most people, and it will vary based on intensity and volume. Now, give it some more time, and you will super compensate. This means you'll come back bigger and stronger. This, of course, is exactly what we're looking for if your goal is to build muscle. But now, if you train before you reach this supercompensation phase, you're no longer going to supercompensate and you're just going to build more fatigue and drop back below baseline and wait for this process to happen again. So guys that train too often or with too much volume, guys who never take rest days, they're consistently in a chronic state of fatigue and just dropping back to baseline. However, if you train correctly and you wait longer than the time it takes just to get back to baseline, you wait until you supercompensate. You're now gonna enter the next workout bigger and stronger. And your goal in the gym should be to stack periods of time at baseline to supercompensation on top of each other. Train, rest, recover, supercompensate, repeat. If you do this over and over again, that's how you consistently build muscle. Now, the question you might have is, how long does this period of supercompensation take? Now, because everyone trains differently, this period of time can vary drastically for everyone in the gym. But if you train with the methods that I generally recommend, moderate volume, which can be somewhere between 10 and 20 working sets per week per muscle group, moderate frequency, training most body parts one to two times per week, and moderate intensity, most sets taken between one and two reps of failure, with half of your working sets to absolute failure, that would mean that a typical workout could have anywhere between five and 10 working sets for a muscle group. And if you're training at the correct intensity, let's say that you do chest on Monday, after that session, you're going to be fatigued and you're still going to be below baseline by Tuesday. If you tried training again on Tuesday, you're absolutely going to find that your performance is lower. By Wednesday, most people would be right back to baseline. Now by Thursday, that's when most people are super compensating. They're fully recovered, and if the initial stimulus of training was great enough, and they followed up with proper food and nutrition, their next training session, if done on that Thursday, could potentially be done from a supercompensated state. But this phase, the supercompensation phase, tends to last a few more days. For most people, this phase tends to peak at around Thursday through Saturday. Meaning if you train on Monday, your next productive training session for that specific body part is likely to be around three to five days later. Now, of course, this is not set in stone. And if you do any type of training outside the guidelines that I just recommended, this window could absolutely be shorter or longer. But for the purposes of this example, let me explain what happens if you follow these guidelines. If you wait any longer than five days now, 
that super compensation phase will actually start to drop back down. Wait a few more days, and now you're gonna be back down by baseline again. This usually occurs for most people at around days six through nine. And this is one of the major reasons why, personally, I just don't like bro splits or splits that work body parts roughly one time per week. If you simply wait seven more days to train that body part again, unless you're training with excessive, absurd amounts of training volume, you might actually go through this entire cycle, fatigue, return back to baseline, super compensate, and then drop all the way back down to baseline again. All this before your next workout. And essentially, you're just starting right back off where you were at the previous Monday. Now, this is actually not a bad thing if your goal is simply just to maintain a muscle. Let's say that you're focused on developing your upper body and you wanna maintain your legs. A leg workout one time per week will absolutely accomplish this. You'll maintain them fine. But if you're looking to develop a specific muscle group, one time per week is not necessarily an effective way to do it. Now again, there's a lot of nuance to this and there are absolutely exceptions to this, and this is not a rule. But this is generally why I like programs that hit body parts a bit more frequently. For me, once every three to five days is really the sweet spot. But now let me explain the rest of this cycle. Let's back that up to about the seven day mark. You're back at baseline at roughly day six through nine. If you wait even longer than that, now your body will actually start to slowly detrain. This is what happens when you take extended periods of time off in the gym. But that doesn't mean by day 10, let's say, you just start to lose muscle and strength. In fact, the more you trained, the stronger you are, the more advanced you are, the more resistant you actually are to atrophy. After about two weeks of no training, the only thing that really happens is your nervous system becomes a bit detrained. Your body might not be currently primed to lift as heavy weights as you once were. What this means in reality, worst case, is you just come into the gym and feel a bit rusty on a lift. Strength is there, but a big compound movement might not feel as smooth as it did. But that's why it's a good idea, if you haven't trained recently or up to two weeks, to come back and hit a lighter session first. Your risk of actual atrophy to the muscle tissues and getting smaller will take much longer than two weeks. So don't freak out if you need to take some time off from the gym. And of course, regaining anything will always come back quicker than it took to build in the first place. The real atrophy of muscle will occur over long periods of time. So now that you understand this process, what does that mean for you? Simply put, if you train to create a training stimulus, you should wait until you recover and super compensate before training again. The harder you train, the more sets you perform, the longer you'll need for this recovery and super compensation phase to occur. So make sure to adjust your training volume and frequency to match your recovery. And if you want the exact programs that I personally recommend to build more muscle using proven old school bodybuilding methods, all my old school mass game programs are down below. And as always, if you wanna see more of the best original bodybuilding content just like this, make sure to hit subscribe.